All right, in this tutorial we'll be doing a little bit more with the world editor, uh, getting terrain set up and you know mapping the terrain, uh, getting it looking somewhat realistic, at least in the beginning. So we're going to go ahead and click on your project, select empty room, uh, which is how I like to start. You can do empty terrain, I believe it starts with a grass, or um, oh, sorry, a sand terrain, but we'll start with empty. And go ahead and it'll just launch, and it'll launch a blank little room here. And we're going to go ahead and move ourselves out of the camera there so we can see our guy. And we're going to hit terrain and that's this one right here. And there's no terrain so let's create a new one and call it uh, island. And it's not going to be very big. We're just going to make it very small and we're going to make it flat. If you hit noise it'll actually create like you know um, hills and all that sort of thing. We're going to start with flat and uh, go from there. Hit create new, and it's going to go ahead and create one way the heck down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop up here, see if we can. Here, what does that? Take this, and we're going to go ahead and make sure the move is selected, which it is. Go ahead and pull that up so that it's actually up above the light box here. So, all right, as you can see, it's basically just a very thin uh flat piece of grass and it's just, you know, as you can tell, painted on. So, doesn't look great, doesn't look horrible, but it's a start. So, uh the first thing we're do, going to do is cover some of the basic tools. Um if you go back to train editor, you know, it's this little paint thing here that allows you to paint things on or or a that's the area of effect essentially. So we're going to start out with this top tool here. It's called Grab Terrain. And let's say we wanted some sort of mountainish thing um, right in the middle, and that's going to be kind of uh, the main point of our map. So we're going to go ahead and grab terrain, and we can pull it up. You notice there. And as you can see, camera speed. Let's go ahead and cover that part. You can turn the camera speed up. That's very helpful. So as you can see there small mountain is appearing and we can go ahead and do that and we can pull it down if we don't like it. That's what the grab tool is. Um, it's pretty useful. It helps create and you'll be using it a lot. It helps create varied terrain. Um, and there's raise height and lower height. Those are two and three. Those are essentially the grab tool except you don't have to actually move. You can just click and it will raise it for you. Um, or lower it for you if you use the other tool. And you can zoom in, zoom out, see how it looks. Um, another tool that you'll be using a ton is right below that and it's number four. It's called the smooth tool and um, that's essentially if something looks jagged and weird you know like it would never look in nature you can just sit here and hit the smooth until it actually looks somewhat decent. You'll be doing a lot of that over your map um, because it will and uh, if it does look too smooth, you can always use the next tool, which number five, which is paint noise. And that just kind of, if you do it on a flat surface, it's especially noticeable, just kind of paint some noise. You got a very, very light touch with this because it, if you just hold it down and move it, it really, really can go pretty high, pretty quick. But as you can see, that one looks a little bit too smooth, so we're going to go ahead and add just a little bit on the sides there. So as you can see this mountain is taking shape. Obviously it looks very grassy for a mountain so I'll we'll have to take a look at that. But Alright, so that covers um, some of it. Flatten is good for making paths for users. Uh, it doesn't look natural though. Uh, as far as I can tell I haven't gotten it to look natural. I mean that's pretty much what it does a big flat surface. Um, so I usually avoid that. Um, set height uh, kind of you, I believe you specify uh, what height it is and then it sets everything to the same height. Don't really use that either. Um, then clear and restore. Uh, clear terrain is just takes it away. I mean it's gone now and then you can hit restore and it restores it. That's useful for making, you know, uh, exits from the map, I think, and maybe caves and stuff like that. You just clear it away and 
there you go. Um, that's pretty much the very, very basics of, of uh, the tools that we're we'll using. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and whip up a few things and probably fast forward or pause through it. Um, and we'll have a small little terrain that we'll start working with. You know what, before I forget, um, I should look at some of the advanced things with you. Um, the brush settings that are available with pretty much each one. Um, you can change it from a circle to a block. You can change the size. The pressure is how much it responds, like how quick it responds um, to uh, mouse movement, um, softness. That is that kind of specifies um, what the appearance is essentially. So let's go ahead and turn the softness down. Um, as you can see, that is with the softness down, and then we turn the softness all the way up. That's the softness there. As you can see, major, major difference. Um, and then this is the softest curve. Um, that's kind of advanced. Um, I haven't really used that one, so I can't can't really talk about it. But it does allow you to specify what exactly is soft and how often it stays soft or hard. So um, height is uh, changes the height. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, that's pretty much similar to all of these. Um, essentially some of the tips of what I'll tell you is, you know, basically, oops, you'll want to make your terrain, uh, the rough edges of your terrain, kind of just map out exactly what the very, very rough edges are going to be, and then you're going to start zooming in and changing the brush size down to very small and making minute changes. Um, there are terrain generators, however, um, I, don't, I can't. I don't see one that's really free that works with Torque. And uh, since I'm not really planning on actually releasing a game, uh, at least not, not one that many people will play, probably just be something that I play around with for fun. I I don't want to spend the thirty-five dollars or whatever for the Torque 3D one, and then there's other ones that you can uh, spend money on if you are so inclined. So. So I'm going to make sort of like an X, and I think we're going to go from there and let me finish that up and we'll probably fast forward or, or pause through it. Alright, very, very simple at this, this, this point, but we're going to have a little basin here where we'll do an example of a little water block, and then we're going to have obviously a very fake looking river because it's just going to start there and then go out there, but it'll give you the basics. Um, and as you can tell, we have just basic terrain sort of uh, scattered around some sort of hills. Some of it obviously looks very generated and fake, and you'd have to work a while to make sure it doesn't look like it, like the ridges and everything are all used, are, are tooled, you know. So uh, I did add just random noise in the middle here uh, with a very light softness that we would have sort of, because terrain never looks exactly, exactly flat, you know, it just has some sort of ridge or something in there, so it's always good to, and if it still looks fake, it's supposed to. Um, what really makes it comes to, come to life is a lot of the grass and trees and everything that we're going to add later, um, or at least partially add, um, maybe not in this tutorial, but hopefully later. Um, so that's our pretty much our basic map, so the next thing we're going to switch over to is the uh, terrain painter because right now we have grass and grass and we need more than just grass so we're going to do a new layer and we're going to take a look at the ones we have right now rock test all right let's do that um and sure that looks great now the thing with train painter the brush settings are again the same the size is pretty you know standard the slope mass is what we care about though because right now we're doing rocks and we want the slope to be let's just say you know for the sake of argument uh, the rocks are really only, the rocky terrain is really only on the hills or on the side of hills, which you see a lot of in real life. So we're going to do a slope minimum. Unless it has a slope of 30, or around 30, we'll just do 31.7, it's not going to paint that rock in. So if we go ahead and 
nothing. Nothing's happening with this rock test. But if we go over to here, you'll notice rocks galore. Because that's the uh, that's the slope coming in effect. And we can just go ahead and paint that right around there with absolutely and as you can see if you zoom in closer, very rocky looking terrain. But on these uh tops it's still very grassy. So that's obviously very, very basic, but it's definitely a start to add a little bit more in. So we can just go ahead and throw this all across here. And you notice it's quickly painting the steeper parts of the slopes, which I think looks at least more realistic than grass, you know, because grass looks, can look somewhat odd when it's on the side of a steep, steep hill. We'll throw it in that little thing there. Alright. And if you really want to, since we're doing a tutorial, if you really want to throw things together, take your brush size all up to 40, and then just do this. And it will grab a good portion, and then you'll just go like this, and Alright, that's good enough. So as we zoom in, you can see it's added the rocks there, so it looks rocky. Looks rocky over here. And that's fairly simple. Alright, um... Let's go ahead and call that good for now. So, as you can see, looks pretty fancy. If we wanted to, we can get adventurous and say, hey, you know what? Let's add another layer. It's going to be sand. We're going to do high select, and then we're just going to uh, we're going to change the scope to zero max of twelve. Um, we're going to turn the pressure down. We're just going to go ahead. Oh, let's turn the brush size down too. Just kind of. Paint that in near the side there. That looks a little bit too much manufactured, so we'll just. I can see there. There's. You can tell that there's in between. There's probably that's probably not the right sand palette. We'd have to have sand mixed with grass. But you know you get the idea. And you can let's go ahead and cover that now actually. So 